Welcome to a brand new season of Industry Leaders. You'll meet people with real passion who through dedication and hard work became our industry leaders. They'll share their inspirational stories of resilience and hope as they advance their chosen industry. On this episode, we'll meet experts in franchising in a 100% Australian-owned company with over 270 service centres nationally. Ultratune's Sean Buckley shares his dream and explains how they've grown the company into the largest independent automotive car servicing and repairer in Australia. Plus much more. Industry Leaders, brought to you by Annex Media. I'm the CEO of Altitude Australia and its subsidiary companies. I'm the owner and the principal. Altitude is uh, a very varied company uh, with uh, 280 service centres around Australia and we have our uh, roadside and fleet care divisions on top of that and our thoroughbred racing and our ultra hair studios and a number of other subsidiary companies that I uh, control. It all started in the 90s. Altitune was a company that was in financial trouble. Um, it had a lot of problems with head leases and, and dramas with their landlords and problems in the, the mix of work. And somehow I ended up acquiring a position in Altitune and uh, then ultimately bought out the company in the late 90s. In those days, we were probably turning over 30 to 40 million. A year had probably 70, 60 stores. And through that journey, we opened new stores up. We just kept working, aiming high, got the right people ahead in the company to help me grow it. They were shared my dream of having a, a large service center that could provide customers with uh, good repairs at a good price with good customer service. So as we grew, we suddenly had you know, 150 stores and 200 stores and 280 stores. We serviced almost 480,000, 470,000 cars in the range there every year. My role as a national marketing manager is to oversee and to help place the advertising around the country by dealing with our agencies um, in different capacities. I was already consulting to Sean, who I'd known for the best part of 15 years. He's been very good to myself and the family. I was in a role up in Queensland, um, which I wasn't that happy with. Um, that particular position became redundant. So we just looked at that as an opportunity to come back down to Melbourne and working in an area which I knew quite well, which was the altitude um, exposure to start with, um, was a motivator. I believe there's still a growth industry there. And then just I landed in the, um, the marketing side of things with Ultratrim, which was quite fortuitous for me. So are you Well, there's been quite a significant expansion in the company um, over the last five or six years. We anticipate with changes that are um, currently a, a foot with the um, ACCC, whereby previously manufacturers have been able to quarantine their repair data, they will no longer be able to do that. It will be legislated against, which will mean independents such as Ultratune will then have access to that data. So we'll be able to service BMW and Mercedes, etc., far more effectively than what we currently can, which will mean that those manufacturers will end up probably retracting some of their um, after-sale service and organisations such as Ultratune will probably grow over the next four to five years. There's a number of ways in which a service can be booked or requested. Um, if you know your, ultra, your local Ultratune, you can ring them directly and a lot of people do that because they've been going for the same Ultratune for a decade or more. Um, alternatively, what we're finding is a really big growth area for us is online bookings and phone um, tap to book. So people um, look up Ultratune on the, and come to our website on their mobile devices a lot of the time. So people just tap on the mobile 
um, it'll locate, the mobile will have located where you're calling from um, and it'll then direct you to your closest Ultratune centre or alternatively you can fill out an online questionnaire which will then be sent to the local Ultratune franchise and that franchise will get back to the person directly. I'm a person who doesn't look backwards, I always look forward. I, I actually don't even live in the moment, I live for the future, I've always done that. I just walked into my boardroom here and I haven't been here for a while, I don't know when we come in here. A lot of nostalgia in here, a lot of history, and it's sort of uh, trophies and things that have uh, happened. It's been a long journey and we're quite a large company and quite a big uh, organisation. Sometimes myself I wonder how I got so big and how I got so complex and how my life sort of <laughs> went from just working with a couple of people in the office to suddenly having staff everywhere and having all this responsibility. It's a tough job. It's a, it's a hard business but it's a good business and it's a, it's a good thing that we can help customers save money and I'm proud of what I've achieved. Ahead on Industry Leaders, more about the automotive servicing and roadside assist company that began in 1979 as Ultratune, Sean Buckley and Rodney Sadaro reflect on the one constant change, plus the controversial rubber goods and celebrity TV ads. Well, car servicing's changed, and the cars have changed, the people have changed, technology's changed. The old days, they had to fix things with wrenches and um, spanners and all that sort of stuff. These days, you put a computer on there with diagnostics and you fix a car. It's a, it's a big difference. Marketing's changed. I mean, in the old days, you just plonk on a TV show or go on the back of Herald Sun or The Age or some newspaper and you get cars. These days the market's so fragmented. I mean, there's, there's hundreds of TV stations, each gave you a little bit of share of the market. Newspapers aren't really read. It's now more social media driven. So it's very hard to build a brand these days. Um, it's, it's a more complex dynamic to do that. So um, Sean decided to be a little bit politically incorrect and to to try and create some controversy. So the rubber girls were born back in probably about four or five years ago now. We're into rubber campaign. We always launch the campaigns around at the same time as Australian Open. I featured in the series of rubber girl TV ads, which were very controversial. There was a lot of complaints and there was a lot of attention to the ad. I have to agree with Laura, it is very controversial, but I think that's the whole point of the ads. Like, no other ads that come out are talked about as much as the ultra tune ones, and that's what sticks in people's minds, and it's always coming up on the band list and um, on the project for just random things that people like to pick up. It's designed to attract the younger market, but it's, it's designed to disrupt and create controversy. I didn't always think it was going to create that sort of controversy in some of the groups that, that were involved with it, but it just did. Uh, it was very successful. Everyone hears about all the complaints, etc., that were made. That particular advertisement was viewed over five million times. We had 144 complaints. So that's to put into perspective. So it's like 0.00002% of the population that complained about it. I feel good about it, like, you know, I feel like any publicity is good publicity, so if you go under the radar unnoticed, it's like you didn't really do the job, so it's good, it's good all the complaints actually help us. I can remember the old days, you'd have a car mechanic on TV saying, come to us, we'll give you the best price and the best service. 
people aren't going to buy that rubbish. People are desensitised to that. You've got to have a, a different gimmick or a different type of angle to attract people. One night we were sitting around um, and I found across this ad called The Trunk Monkey. I don't know if you've ever seen it or not. It's a series of 20 ads about a monkey that saves a day. Okay, and the monkey, for example, someone tries to rob someone and the monkey comes out with a spanner and knocks them on the head. And it was totally irrelevant to car buying. Okay, it was from America, of course. So I thought, I didn't want to copy them and do what they did. So I thought, what could we do that could get attention in the younger market, be relevant, and build our profile up in that 21 to 40 market segment? At the time I was dating and I was engaged to one of the stars in the ad, it's Laura. That was pretty exciting. We were engaged for a few years. Um, and then it didn't really work out at the moment, but we're best friends and we still love each other. And I kept thinking about it and I said, what about a couple of girls driving who have all sorts of problems with their car and roadside assist and opportune help? So we ran the commercials and the first couple made the most complaints ever in history in the uh, Complaints Bureau. Complaints, death threats, basically terrible mail. All because a couple of girls drive off a cliff and get rescued by a helicopter. I don't know, this is a problem. I think it's funny. So we just started going along with this thing and we started, our car numbers went up and our sales went up. And I said, let's put a bit of spice into it. Let's put Van Damme in it. Then um, I'm a big boxing fan and I'd met Mike Tyson years ago. And we rang him up and he said, I'd love to do it. So we got him on board. So this year then we said, well, who else can we get who's got to cut through? Charlie Sheen. And we've got a great ad for him. It's a company that just, there's no limits to it. And the fact that they got Charlie Sheen, Mike Tyson, John claude Van Damme in an ad to me, that means they dare to dream because there's no Australian-owned companies that I could see that have superstars like that in ads. And it just, it's an exciting, productive, uh, A1 company, that's why I see it there. They just, they strive for excellence, they're good people. Altitude position, was positioned by the CanStar for two years running, 2016-2017, as the most trusted after-sales independent servicer in the country. So our relationship is excellent with our clients. We also have a Trustpilot rating of over 9.5 out of 10 from over 4,000 reviews on Trustpilot. Still to come on Industry Leaders, an emotional Sean Buckley shares his personal success story from shelf packer to owner of Ultratune, including all the highs and lows of building his company into an Australian icon. First thing was I graduated from university uh, in um, 1984 from Chisholm. I did a Bachelor of Business majoring in Marketing and uh, partly Psychology as well. I paid my way through school. I used to fill the supermarket shelves of Woolworths uh, in Glen Waverley, where I used to work uh, probably you know, four nights a week to pay the bills to go to school. So I worked there for about three years and we opened up some ice creams and I got, they got me involved in this ice cream division. In those days, the, the Hagen Dazs ice cream and those sort of brands of ice cream that are there now uh, weren't around then. And I developed them with them and we had an ice cream factory there. And then I got bored and I, I started making a lot of money in the stock market. Uh, so I left to just work with other companies, but I was, my hobby was stock market. Every night I go home and play stock market. And then um, I lost everything, and the stock market crashed for 87. 
and then I went overseas and worked at, uh, in Hong Kong and then I went to India and Pakistan to work there running a food factory uh, as marketing director. Overall the whole period about three years, three or four years. I liked it but it was boring, I had nothing to do. Gave that up and I came back to Australia. My dad was uh, doing some consulting work for uh, Altitude and then they got me to work there as marketing manager, then general manager for a while, and the company uh, was in a terrible financial mess. It was, a, it was a nightmare in 93, and they couldn't pay their bills, and we had debt collectors coming to our doors, and people hiding on the desks, and you know, we were scared to answer because people had all this money, and pretty funny period. And anyway, so I went on the market for sale, and my fiance uh, at the time bought it, and uh, then ultimately uh, she sold to me a couple of years later. We basically became friends through our love of cricket. We were both going to be test cricketers and play for Australia. Uh, didn't work out too well for me. Late 70s to the early 80s is where we really developed our friendships. Probably from the mid 20s we drifted apart. And then one day my daughter had had a cut, so we had to go to Cabrini Hospital and walking down the corridor, someone goes, Dave Fisher. And I go, who are you? Sean Buckley. I've gone, wow, what are you up to? He said, I own UltraTune. I said, what, you've bought a service station? Thinking he'd bought one, you know. And you're very happy for your friends if they do well. He said, oh no, I own the whole lot. And I've gone, wow, that is tremendous. Sean Buckley is a guy who reminds me of Willy Wonka from the Chocolate Factory. When you get that opportunity to work with Sean, you give him your goal and he can make your dreams come true if it's viable. It's a, just an exciting time to be around someone like Sean Buckley because he does make dreams come true. I've known Sean for over 15 years and we've been involved in events and sporting events and other areas and um, it's been a great ride. and. Uh, Hopefully we can keep going with that. Sean's a great guy and he's always supportive. His personality is a lot of fun, very creative, motivated and highly successful. It's wild when you talk to Sean, like he's so incredibly intelligent and just the ideas that he comes up with and the way he thinks about things, it's almost hard to sort of like talk to him about it because I'm not on that level. When Sean bought UltraTune, there was about 60 to 70 stores. Now there's over 270 stores nationwide. The only advice I can give is don't play Monopoly with him. That's a friend breaker or whatever. That was uh, quite interesting nights playing Monopoly. That got quite wild at some times, but uh, I suppose that shows the determination to win and to um, you know, be strong. I just want to be successful and do the best I can for the car industry. And it really agitates me and gets me upset that I see so many people that are conned by these car dealers who uh, I think are just, you know, crooks. I, I can't say it in a nicer way, okay? And I, I, I see it all the time and uh, I don't like it and I don't think it's fair. But probably the best lesson was when I lost my money in, in the 80s. I, I, you know, I lost everything and it was a terrible time and I think now I wear it as a badge of honour because it made me smarter, tougher, and uh, I remember my dad telling me before he died, he said, you know, don't be ashamed that you've lost everything because I know you're talented and one day you'll be successful because you've got that drive in you. And uh, he was right. It's just unfortunate he never saw it.
Stay tuned to industry leaders as Ultratune's visionary CEO, Sean Buckley, opens up about his father's precious advice on work ethic and honesty. Plus, Sean's mission statement to franchisees and customers and the future of the company. Well, my dad was a, a guy who, who was a very hard worker. He instilled hard work in me. And he was, he worked at Gillette for all his life. And he progressed up the tree at Gillette. And um, he, uh, he was like a public relations manager and, and director for them. And he did a lot of government work uh, with the company. And he was a good man. He was honest. Um, he, uh, he was a hard worker. Uh, and he, he was my best friend. And uh, he always said to me he thought I'd be successful, but he said I had to rein in my um, aggression. When I was young, I was very aggressive, and my, I, I always pushed things to the limit in terms of the line in the sand, where I should go. But my dad died in uh, late 95. He never actually saw me uh, be successful. And that's, that, that brings me a lot of heartbreak to see that. He never saw it. Um, but I think about him every day, still. Altitune is predominantly a car servicing. Um, it's the leader in the aftermarket car servicing um, area. But we also do roadside assist, uh, we do ultra tyres. So there's a plethora of different automotive um, services that we do offer the consumer. Altitude Roadside Assist, we offer free roadside assist to our customers, so if you're a, an Altitude customer, you get 12 month free roadside assistance, um, which allows you to, if you've got a problem, um, you basically call our roadside assist number uh, or use our app, and one of our vans will come to you and they'll transport you back to the closest Altitude to, to rectify any problems. Alternatively, just like any other roadside assistance um, program, we've got different tiers there. So you could um, ring up Altrudge or you could um, engage online with us and we could sell you a, a higher level assistance program if you wanted. Our mission is very simple really. We want to fix people's cars. We want to do it as cheap as they can get for them. Uh, we have an anti-dealer philosophy. You can bell and whistle anything you like, that dealers rip customers off. Even the warranty things we see, they give warranty. You go in there for a warranty, and somehow you walk out penning $2,000. It's set up that way on the sales, the sales courses we see and, the, and what they do. And we know what they do. We hire dealers to come in, they buy our Ultratune franchises, and we have to retrain them about not ripping customers off. They're, it's ingrained in their mentality. I'd like to think that my company has that ethos where we understand the common people who are out there trying to save money on car servicing and then we can help them by getting their car service cheaper and we mean that. Ultra Tune opening 200 stores was a milestone for me. That was I, I'd driven for that for a long time. Getting the uh, ACCC hearings last December uh, in order for them to change the way that the car dealers control data in the country, I think that was a milestone. I think that's really good for people in the market, the customers, who will stop this price gouging and, and stop them being robbed. He compiled a report of 600 horror stories of people being robbed and it took uh, one of our girls here who works for me, helped me do it. And and we gave that submissions to the ACCC. I felt good for a lot of success stories in my company. A lot of people have made a lot of money out of Altitude. I've made a lot of money, but think about me, franchisees, okay? Um, we've, we've created a lot of wealth for a lot of people, and I'm proud of that. I opened up overseas in Saudi Arabia and Bahrain. Um, that was very proud to do, moment to do that. I ended up selling out, and 
cashing out of that. They wanted to take 100% control. I was happy to sell it to them for a bit of money. So I was happy with that, but I was proud that I went over there and did that. Ultra Tune's a great company. I've got many, many experiences, but probably Randy Pedal Caller and recently now been asked to fight for a world title is a big highlight because Ultra Tune got him through as a young kid that we sponsored through from the Philippines and he's fought in Australia the last four or five years and now he's actually making a big time on fighting for a world title. It's here for the long term. It's been around for over 30 years. It's growing at a rate of knots and we anticipate that um, with the changes with the ACCC legislation, UltraTune will become even bigger than what it currently is. If the company didn't have financial problems in those days, I would never have had the chance of getting involved. In some things in life, uh, you get the right break and the right luck, and you, you, make, you, you take it. The question is, can you take the luck you have to get something and make it successful? I must say, I have been, I was lucky, but I have driven the business to a spot that probably no one really thought we'd get to in, in the last 20 years.